Okay, thank you to the GAA for giving me the chance to talk to you today. I'm going to talk to you about growing confidence in aquaculture and specifically confidence that it's moving in the right direction for sustainability. This is from my perspective as the aquaculture project lead at the Anderson Cabot Center for Ocean Life at the New England Aquarium, an environmental NGO based in Boston, Massachusetts. Healthy eating advice is eating seafood twice a week. So we envisage a future where each of these 104 opportunities a year, consumers can select seafood, farmed or wild, that will protect the long-term health of the aquatic ecosystem. To make this a reality, we realized 20 years ago we needed to partner with major buyers to combine our research with their buying power and force change in a global industry. These are our current partners and they occupy a range of different niches with many opportunities and challenges. We develop custom solutions for each of these and we're not alone. Over 80% of retailers in Europe and America have commitments to sustainable seafood, and that's growing in China and Japan. These systems have a common framework, a comprehensive sustainability policy, a detailed environmental assessment of all the products they buy and sell, from which we develop improvement strategies, market claims, educate staff, and help with things like policy. But the issues that drive sustainability are, are complex. They're things like seed and feed and chemicals, the species being selected, the intensity of that production, habitat, escapes. There's too many to address in this time frame. So what I want to talk about is four core behaviors that I think are essential for driving confidence. They are to be proactive, to be transparent, to be accurate, and to be collaborative. Being proactive is all about learning lessons that, uh, from previous industries and introducing those solutions before those issues happen in, in another industry. Take the ISA outbreak in Chilean salmon or the spread of uh, EMS and IMNV and other viral diseases in shrimp. Wouldn't it have been great if we'd introduced effective area management systems at the very start or enhanced biosecurity on import control? And what other issues could we be proactive about? Things like antimicrobial resistance, the uptake of vaccines in invasive species, greenhouse gas emissions, plastics. Being proactive is especially important during rapid periods of industry growth. Ecuador is intensifying its shrimp industry. Intensification increases stress on organisms, and that can lead to disease, potentially even chemical use. And it places greater demands on ecosystem services to mop up things like effluent. So we need to be proactive about advancing farm management and regulation. Being proactive is also about embracing solutions. Selective breeding is an underutilized solution for enhancing climate change adaption in species, improving disease resistance, and enhancing feed efficiency. But with it comes the threat that if these animals escape, they can cause genetic pollution to wild stocks. So we also need to be proactive about uh, trade-offs, improving holding systems, farming sterile uh, grow-out stocks, and protecting the wild genetic resources because that's going to be the future genetic material for selective breeding for tomorrow's diseases. Next up is to be transparent. And why does this industry need to be transparent? Well, bad news contained in industry, be it antibiotic rejections in Indian shrimp, or uh, social issues in reduction fisheries, or major farming uh, escapes. Each of these gives sort of it's, it's just easier to find uh, bad news than it is to, be, to find good news. Because data in the aquaculture industry is like an iceberg. It's often only the tip that's visible. That might be information on 200 farms out of an industry of 20,000. Information as simple as what are the farming regulations and what are common farming practices can be hard to find. We try to find information on enforcement data, on uh, seed sources, on chemical use, on escapes. Information like sources of fish meal and fish oil and uh, their inclusion is considered proprietary. And what's really difficult is if you're unable to find the data, you can't tell how many good actors there are versus bad actors. And that doesn't do any good for confidence. The other good news, though, is that we have new tools coming on the market, things like the IQ Shrimp Program or Farm Force, tools for educating and collecting data from farms. We have regulatory data and we have certification data. So wouldn't it be great if we could agree on a common set of data and share this publicly? Maybe this would actually give us a baseline that we could measure our improvement over time. Next up is to be accurate, especially when we're making market claims. These are the seven sins of greenwashing as promoted by TerraChoice. And they're relevant today, but in particular, I want to draw your attention to sin two, the sin of no proof, when we make an environmental or even a social claim without some verification to back it up from a third party. 
Being accurate is critical. Look at traceability. If we claim we can do something and we can't do it, we lose trust. And we can't build that trust back to that same level. And we also need to recognize that just tracing something back to the, the farm isn't sufficient. We need to be able to verify that the practices on that farm warrant that environmental claim. More good news, we have the growth of certification in aquaculture. Boots on the ground of people going and auditing to standards and verifying those practices. It's worth remembering that only the responsible fishing scheme puts a boot on the ground on a boat and does that sort of assessment. And that's really important if we want to make claims about social justice. And finally, we have to protect this trust, this, this value of verification. And that's going to mean looking beyond at what's written in a standard and asking questions like, are we really sure that auditors interpret those standards correctly on the farm? And do those standards have the environmental benefits that they claim to? I think it's about time that we maybe ask the question, do we need to start measuring the value of accreditation? Finally, I just want to be, say, be collaborative, form effective partnerships. Combining with NGOs is a great way to add credibility and keep goals aspirational. That's going to help build confidence. It's especially important in the world of pre-competitive industry groups, which do give you the influence and the power to dilute those goals. So please, keep goals aspirational. So finally, just a reminder, be proactive, be transparent, be accurate, and be collaborative. In this way, we can build trust that aquaculture is becoming more sustainable because we'll be taking the steps and we'll have the data to prove it. Thank you so much for your attention.